Good evening to you, Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Evening Edition for Sunday, the 2nd of September. I want to take a look real quick at what's going on with the newly designated potential tropical cyclone number 7. I know that's all confusing. It's like, has there been potentially other cyclones, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6? Well, yeah, sort of. Florence was number 6, but that doesn't matter. It's It's almost there. It's the next phase in the evolution up from being an invest and because it's close to land they do this so they can go ahead and initialize advisories and watches or warnings if necessary and it should be eventually named storm number seven and the name would be Gordon so this is what it looks like this is the track uh, more than likely headed towards the north central Gulf Coast here with the landfall expected sometime between Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon and so the central Gulf Coast under a tropical storm watch uh, the main thing is gonna you know there's gonna be some heavy rain uh, this straight in track from southeast to northwest will pile up the water in the Mississippi Sound and along parts of the usual areas down in the Plaquemines Parish east facing and uh, beaches or marshes or whatever you want to call it in that region it's going to catch that water pretty uh, pretty easily like a cow catcher would does that make sense and so this track even though we're not looking at least at yet at a hurricane potential you are going to have some storm surge issues water inundation over highway 90 in places maybe in Hancock County southeast Louisiana the usual areas uh, this could be a problem and you know, is it a major event? No, and I've never built it up to be a major event. But it's going to impact people. It'll impact the oil industry that's out there. You know, if it exists, it has an impact. And so uh, we're going to talk about it, and people need to be aware of it. And I'm going to go down there in person. Hey, this is what I do. It's my job. I absolutely love studying what tropical cyclones do. I don't care how weak they are. So here it is. It's headed in and. We'll see what happens. The discussion was interesting. This is from Stacy Stewart. Uh, I know Mr. Stewart personally. I've known him since about 1999. And uh, he wrote a very good discussion. And I want to just talk about this last paragraph here where he mentions about the shear and the anticyclonic upper level flow that's changing. I showed you that earlier, that it looks like the overall shear pattern is going to be replaced with one that is more conducive. But he talks about... Uh, that you know the disturbance will be moving across the Gulf Stream water temperatures are very warm and the convection will likely help this mid-level circulation that we were able to see rotating around in satellite imagery today get down to the surface and then once that happens low to modest vertical shear and very warm sea surface temperatures of around 30 Celsius how many times have we looked at that I've told you this you know eventually it's gonna matter and here we go, that this should allow for at least slow but steady strengthening. Uh, and even though the official intensity forecast shows weakening at 72 hours, that's because that is a time position point. But in between 48 and 72, let's say around hour 60, it should peak around 55 knots, according to the only guidance that they really have available. And that was the statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme and you know what after all these years I've never memorized what LGEM but these are the only intensity models they had available for this package the ships and the LGEM models and they're indicating you know around 55 knots which is 65 miles per hour and you know that that's respectable that'll cause some problems that'll pile up the water several feet in that storm surge prone area on the north side of the circulation those bands coming through you're going to have the potential for water spouts, tornadoes, severe weather, and torrential rainfall. So just writing this off as a non-event, I mean, come on. We know better than that. Is it, you know, the next, you know, Camille? Of course not. And, you know, and nothing even in between right now. So what it is, though, uh, is the potential for a developing tropical storm heading towards the central Gulf Coast. And Mr. Stewart goes on to mention that the H Wharf and the HMON, these are hurricane specific models. Those will be forthcoming so that the next advisory package will have that information, especially tonight. And then tomorrow morning's um, advisory package, the 5 a.m. Eastern, 
that discussion should feature and the intensity prediction, the forecast, these latest overnight models. The global models are not very enthusiastic. I noticed the 18Z GFS was very weak overall. Uh, with it being a small system, I'm, I'm a little leery to believe that it'll be very weak. I don't know. Like I said earlier, it's okay to say I don't know. That's why I'm going to go down there, because if I don't go down there, it'll be a 120-mile-an-hour hurricane, and I'll be like, oh, man, I wasn't there for it. And I'm taking my anemometer. I'm going to set it up uh, in Gulfport, Mississippi, right at the small craft harbor, and then I'll be mobile. I do not have the Chevy Tahoe any longer. Uh, it's, you know, retired. So I've rented a nice Jeep Wrangler. It's what they had available. It wasn't my choice. And so that'll be interesting. But I'll, I'll have mobile measurements. I'll be able to see what's happening. And we'll, we'll know because I'll be there in person. And other people will too. It's not just me. All right. So this is what the satellite picture looks like this evening. There's Florence. we got plenty of time to watch Florence. Yes, I see the models that get it between Bermuda and Hatteras. It's like a field goal that goes, yay, it's good. Um, you know, if it does a track like that, why not? Uh, the surfers will love it over here, and it'll build up a bunch of ace points, and it won't bother anybody directly. But we do have to watch this because if it comes in, yeah, you just never know. As the heights build back over the Atlantic in the coming days, Florence, and then this future system, who knows what that will turn into. And you know what? It's only September 2nd. And all of a sudden, all this activity. But you look here at uh, what should eventually be, it's just weird saying PTC, <laughs> the disturbance. Not very well organized just yet, so that'll be an interesting thing to see per the discussion from Mr. Stewart if the convection that he talks about over that warm water does indeed take shape tonight. I want to show you this. It's not available. That was a bummer. I want to look at the vorticity, but... No data available for winds from the University of Wisconsin site, and it's nothing. I mean, they're just not there. Oh, that is, but that's not what we're looking for. It's not the droids you're looking for. Star Wars on the brain. Uh, the very early model run, at least from earlier today, the 18 UTC, eh, this is the uh, GFS Ensemble Mean. That is the GFS, they call it the AVN. Um, interpolated, that's the, you know, the, the operational version. And then you have your derivatives here, your, you know, like the old. Remember the beta and advection models? You had shallow, medium, and deep. Well, these are the tabs. And no, I don't know what those mean, but those are simpler models. We don't really have the big suite of guidance in just yet. But what we do have, very tightly clustered envelope for the most part, you know, even out at day two. Not that much of a spread. And then beyond that time, you know, maybe leaning more towards uh, with the official track, northwest Louisiana with time. So that's the, you know, the big point here. A lot of rain is going to fall across this area. It can cause some flooding. This so far isn't the worst thing we've seen coming at you. It is worthy of paying attention to and taking seriously. And I will certainly do my part to bring you what coverage I can. I'll be leaving Wilmington by about 10 a.m., Monday, Labor Day, and I will make my way through towards Atlanta and then down through Montgomery. I'm hoping I'm hitting these pretty close. And then down 65 to Mobile and then over here to Gulfport, Mississippi, where I will set up base camp, if you will. Nice area. I love the Mississippi coast. I will set up equipment all along the coast down here and then maybe try to get down into the Plaquemines Parish somewhere for landfall. Got to be careful, though, because down there, that surge can get you, so I want to make sure I, I watch for that myself. But maybe I'll put a camera down there and then come back and get it later or something. I'm also going to try, in, in addition to the live stuff, I'm taking several of these GoPro systems that I have modified to run for 26 hours and uh, try them out, see how that looks. Imagine the time lapse we can get from that. This is a good opportunity to test some stuff. And just to kind of stay up, it's like a practice run in case something bigger comes along. Because, hey, it looks like something might. You just never know. So you guys down there, don't panic, but don't you know, brush it off as being nothing either. Keep your cool. Use common sense. Pay attention to people that you trust. Discount rumors and lunatics. And uh, as long as I never fall into those categories, I guess we'll be doing all right. And then I'll report more uh, from the road tomorrow. 
When I get up, I'll do a morning update. We'll see what the overnight guidance has shown us, and then we will go from there. All right, have a great rest of your Sunday night. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll have more for you tomorrow.